Thank you. Okay, good evening everybody. Um, Happy New Year to you all, councillors and residents who are here in the hall or watching on the live stream. Um, this is our first meeting of 2024. Just a reminder, although I think this mic is working extremely well actually, I feel as if it's a very good sound quality tonight, but um, just to remind everybody speaking to uh, project your voice well and speak clearly into the mic so that everyone uh, can hear what we're saying. Uh, we start with apologies for absence. Sarah, who do you have apologies from? Um, we've got apologies from um, Councillor McNeil Ritchie, and um, I think it's going to be also Councillor Bessant, who thought she might not be able to make it. Oh. We haven't had an apology, but yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Are there any declarations of interest from anybody? Nope, no declarations of interest. Um, we come to the minutes of the last meeting held on the 31st of October. These were published with the agenda. Um, is somebody willing to propose that we accept those, please? Uh, Tim, and do you have a seconder? Sarah. So we'll move to a vote to approve the minutes of the last meeting. That's carried. Thank you. Um, any matters arising? No, no matters arising. Questions uh, from public and councillors. Who do we have on the list, Sarah? Um, oh. uh, Kate Nicholl, would you like to come and ask your question? Oh, it's Liz. Um, we have you first, and then I think Liz is also on the list, or, or it's Liz instead of you? Okay, all right, is Liz next then? Okay, Liz, then do come next. Can you hear that? My name is Elizabeth Stevens. Becky Alley Woods is a great environmental resource which could be used to educate people of all ages and backgrounds as to what is an ancient woodland and why it is so important. I speak for myself a long-term citizen of Bradford and Avon, a parent, a teacher, a scientist, past leader of Woodcraft Folk, a member of various voluntary organisations, to emphasise the importance of risk assessments when working with groups of people. In order for organisations to take groups of people through Becky Addy Woods responsibly and to educate them when standing on the legal footpath that runs through the woods, there needs to be a risk assessment by a professional arboriculturalist on the safety of the trees within falling distance on either side of the footpath. This should be an act of care for those people who walk along the footpath and a requirement for insurance cover. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Um, that was a very helpful statement. Um, you didn't ask a question, so there's nothing for me to add except, as you know, uh, it would be useful to have a copy. Thank you for the minutes. And as you are aware, I believe the uh, council has followed and has, was seeking to follow the professional advice it has sought from arborists uh, on the management of Becky Addy Wood. And um, it's been that professional advice that we've uh, consistently sought to follow in, in managing the wood for the safety of, of residents, walking groups, and anybody using the woods. So thank you for your comment. Uh, who's next? Uh, Ro Rowena Quantrill, next. Thank you. Um, our son, Oliver, takes our grandson to the youth center every Friday evening for the table tennis session. But because Oliver's all a teacher and always has a pile of marking, he tends to sit outside the hall doing his marking. 
And he said it was so cold in there because of the drafts coming through the windows that he actually had to go and sit in his car. He couldn't sit in there. So I just wondered if there were any plans for the town council to do a bit more draft proofing of the youth centre and maybe save some money and some carbon emissions and make life more comfortable for my overburdened son. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, so we're very mindful that the youth centre is badly in need of refurbishment um, for the benefit of all the groups that use it, not to mention parents waiting. Um, we're looking at a project to, to get that done and have been talking with the user groups on the kind of, you know, what they're looking for. In a, and, and we'll be taking on boards all the different points that the user groups make as regards, you know, how we spend, what money we've got on, on upgrading it. I think absolutely that... Um, making it draft proof would be a really important part of that so that can certainly be added to the list i'm sure as something we can we can look at because we are keen to um, minimize as much as possible the carbon emissions from our buildings and um, the youth center sounds like it would be a very good place to start alex i can see you'd like to add something yes yes excuse me i've got a bit of a croaky voice this evening but i'd just like to say that it's been long in my heart that we would um, have a youth centre, well it's community and youth centre refurbishment and go a lot further than the current user groups but that we would make it so that we could have uh, community um, cooking demonstrations and uh, community cafe and, and make it much, for, much better and more inviting and cosy space and much more eco. So hopefully this is a project we can uh, start really working on um, when we have time I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Sarah? Uh, we do currently have a student from, postgraduate student from Bath University who is looking at how we uh, go through and assess the carbon footprint and energy consumption of our whole estate. So what he's trying to do is to look at a methodology that would allow us to, uh, to give us a baseline for the carbon footprint of the existing buildings and therefore look at the best way to measure how improvements could be done. So he's looking at the, the system for how it would work and that we can then implement it. I think when we've got the final report from him, which should be in February, well, he should hand it in. Well, he's supposed to hand it in already, so I suspect he'll hand it in by the end of this month. So should should help. It'll get us at least to start it. So, Alex, yeah. Thank you, Sarah. We digress already, but I presume said student will be presenting that to councillors before then. Will he not? Will he not be presenting the results of his study to the Environment and Green Space Committee at the very least before then? Before he finishes it, you know, like when he... Oh, I see. Yeah, there are two parts. Before February, doing. whenever yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, no, there's two parts. When I said finish it, is that part of it is a dissertation that he's doing, which he had a deadline for in December. So the fact that it's not finished was more to do with his academic obligations, not oh. his obligations okay. to us. Okay. But yes, of course. So we'll look forward to that. Thanks. Uh, Dave? Um, just really a question for Sarah. I mean, you think we're looking at the refurbishment project, but I mean, that building is rather strange in the way that the space has been used. And I wonder whether, as part of any project to bring it up to a, a good standard, could look at how the space is used at the moment. I mean, the, within the roof space, it's just nothing uh, which could be office or something, but uh, yeah. Lovely, thank you. That was a useful extra discussion. So thanks for bringing that subject up. Um, any more questions? No, any questions from councillors? No, lovely. So we move on to Chair's report. Firstly, uh, the flooding of the last um, scene last week. I just firstly want to express sympathy to those uh, residents and businesses who experienced the flooding of their premises uh, during the floods last week. It must be a very distressing experience and I want to say a special thank you to those uh, public councillors, uh, members of the community volunteers and our town wardens who helped out in numerous ways over the few days. Questions have been raised about the flood barriers. These were never the property of the town council or ours to erect or not erect, but of the Environment Agency, 
who previously would put them up when there was a risk of flood, they stopped deploying them because of an incident where there was evidence of a safety risk. This is because the weight and power of rising water is such that basically it was shown to just move the barriers quite suddenly, I think, and at speed, with the result that that poses a safety risk to any person who might be in the way and also renders the barriers ineffective at that point. So they no longer deploy them. There have been discussions between the Environment Agency and Wiltshire Council, who are the two bodies responsible for flood management, as regards a new scheme for Bradford-on-Avon. We understand that the key issue now is to get the funding in place. We have been in touch with them again just in the last few days to find out where things are to, um, but we haven't had a, a reply to that recent inquiry. We have previously understood that the Town Council would be required to contribute, and we have um, what was stated as the required amount, £30,000, set aside for that purpose. So, essentially, we are ready to make our contribution when, uh, when Wiltshire Council and, and the Environment Agency have, have reached the um, point that, that they're ready for it, and, and we will be pushing uh, for progress, because it certainly would be good to see a lasting solution given that we're likely to see more of this kind of weather, unfortunately. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention is the traffic modelling report. Um, it was delayed for very good reasons. I think the modellers were working hard on our report on our behalf, but we did receive the report yesterday afternoon and it's been published on our website today. Uh, the council obviously itself hasn't had a chance to consider it yet, but we had said we'd get it published as soon as we received it. So that's been done and then it will be discussed at the sustainable travel meeting later in January. Um, meanwhile, Tim Trimble has been in touch with the cabinet member for highways to ask for a meeting uh, to discuss next steps as regards a presentation to residents to ask questions and to understand the content and recommendation of the report. So that is now available for everyone to take a look at. There is an executive summary um, which is one document and then the full report is another. It's, it's certainly best to start with the executive summary because the full report is quite complex. <laughs> um, uh, Becky Addy Wood, uh, we have made statements at the last two full council meetings which are on the website. There isn't a significant development of any kind to report uh, this evening, um, but we do continue to work hard to uh, achieve a settlement um, because we, yeah, we very much want to bring the case to a close and, and the costs involved, uh, both financial and to the officer time at the town council. But at the moment, there's nothing further um, to say on that. And finally, town vision. Thank you to all those who commented on the town vision. In fact, we received such a number of reports, uh, of comments, many of some significant detail, that we're still considering all that, and it's being, the vision is being updated, and we anticipate bringing it to the full council meeting in March. Um, then my engagements since the last meeting were published with the agenda. I just want to quickly mention a few of those. Um, it was lovely to have the opportunity to um, thank the Lions for all their tremendous work in the community. Obviously, most recently, we saw the tree and the Father Christmas sleigh that brings a great deal of pressure to children in the town. The Remembrance Service was as moving and um, uh, tremendous an occasion as ever and a real indication of the strength of our organisations. And I particularly thank jo uh, Canon Joanna Abacassis, Rector of Holy Trinity, as it was her last Remembrance Sunday at the church. She retires at the end of this month, so we, we wish her well in her retired uh, life. Uh, once again, uh, the Christmas light switch on was a great success, and we will be keeping the lights on again as we did last year until mid-February or so uh, to keep some cheer in the town centre through the winter months, uh, which is a reminder to please do continue supporting our valuable shops, cafes, pubs and restaurants. Even though we're not now spending or celebrating Christmas, it's good to do our shopping as much as possible in our local independent businesses. Um, I had a really enjoyable visit to the Riding for the Disabled group who do an amazing amount of work with a large number of, of clients as well as involving lots of people in very satisfying work as volunteers. Uh, the 
nine lessons in carol service at Belfield Church was a pleasure. Uh, Deputy Mayor Councillor Emma and Franklin and I both attended a tea at the Wiltshire Kite Heights Care Home. We were very impressed by the standard of the decorations, weren't we? They were, um, they'd had a competition between the different floors of the home and they were really quite splendid. And I also enjoyed, it's a shame Jenny isn't here, but she organises the Thursday Club and invited me to pop into their party, which was very nice just before Christmas. So uh, those are my announcements. And we now turn to the budget, so I'll hand over to Councillor Sam Blackwell, who's chair of our Resources Committee, to introduce the budget. Th thanks, Katie, <clears throat> and good evening, everybody. Sorry, there's a bit of feedback on here. No. Is that okay? Um, try like that. Okay. I think... Yeah, I think that's better. Brilliant. Thank you. So, uh, one second. So, budget planning for the next financial year again takes place uh, amidst an ongoing cost of living crisis faced by individuals and businesses. While headline inflation may be easing, it remains well above the Bank of England target rate, and as we all know, many areas of everyday expenditure continue to rise rapidly, not least our housing costs, rent, mortgages, and of course food. In addition to general inflation, the Council will also face a number of additional financial headwinds in the 2024-25 financial year. Firstly, the Council tax base for Bradford-on-Avon will contract in the next financial year. Council tax base is a funding formula controlled by Wiltshire Council and the reduction implies that overall council tax revenue from households in the town will fall. This is of course surprising given that we're not aware that the number of residents has fallen um, and it is only the second known instance when uh, the council tax base has shrunk, the first time being in the 21-22 financial year. Unfortunately, there is no channel through which the Town Council can challenge this decision and it means that in nominal terms, so before the effect of inflation is considered, our income from the precept would reduce um, compared with the current financial year if rates are held at the same level. Secondly, as a result of a change in Wiltshire Council's policy, Bradford-on-Avon, like towns and parishes across the county, will have to fund its own elections from this year onwards. Um, while our full elections are not due until the following year, um, any by-election, for example, would have to be funded from our budget. We hope there will be no by-election, uh, but we must create funds for this, and hopefully we can roll them over to 20, 25, 26 financial year when we know an election will take place. Thirdly, following the asset transfer from Wiltshire Council, the Town Council, as you probably know, has taken on the street services contract. All services have been brought in-house in contrast to Wiltshire Council's approach uh, of outsourcing. This decision has proved successful uh, in, in that um, we now have a, an expanded team of town wardens who work extremely hard to keep our town clean and facilities working. The fact that they are managed in-house means that we can control their workflows and, priori and priorities in accordance with our changing needs. Um, as a result of recent changes in local government pay scales, uh, some of the associated staffing costs have been higher than what we originally forecast. However, I would say that given the invaluable role which are played by our, our town wardens, the functions that they perform seven days a week, all weather conditions, um, I, th I think we can all agree that their compensation is, is highly deserved. We now have a highly skilled and diverse council team delivering across multiple areas to enhance life in our town. The council has the resources to support our community through initiatives such as uh, community fridge, warm spaces project um, and the children's holiday clubs. Our portfolio of events has increased and will include greater support for the town's much-loved Green Man Festival this year. 
Another area of the budget which will be boosted by additional funding is the play area enhancement project, which centres firstly on Poulton Park. Many of the play areas we inherited um, following the asset transfer had seen very little investment or even basic maintenance in the years prior to the asset transfer and therefore investment in these is a top priority to ensure families and our younger residents have the facilities that they deserve. So in light of these considerations, the town budget is recommended to increase by 12% to £1.4 million pounds, um, in the next financial year, which will require an increase of 9% in the precept paid by local taxpayers. The precept is the segment of council tax which is paid to the town council, as opposed to Wiltshire Council, the fire or police authorities. For a band D property, the precept for the next financial year will be £273.61p, which is an increase of about £23 per year compared with the current financial year. This equates to an additional 43 pence per week and means that the average, well, the band D property pays £5.25 a, uh, a week for town council services and facilities. For lower bands, uh, increases are proportionally lower. And it goes without saying that we will be focused on delivering an excellent portfolio of services and facilities for this funding. In order to meet the additional costs, the council is adopting a more entrepreneurial approach to income generation, with revenue from fees and charges forecast to rise by 18% in the next financial year and grants up by 22%. So the overall share of the council, uh, council budget comprised of the precept, i.e. from local taxpayers, will decrease from 89% to 79%. So, in short, I recommend this budget to members as a, a measured settlement in the current economic environment, ensuring that the council has resources to continue delivering excellent services across the town and develop facilities and events which will benefit our residents and businesses. Thank you very much, Sam. That was a very helpful presentation. Has anyone any comments or questions? Um, Alex, I saw first, then Tim. Okay, I, I would just, just like to emphasise that we're still maintaining a high environmental project budget just as we have, and I just, you didn't actually emphasise that in your presentation, so I just wanted to make sure, one, that it was true, and two, uh, if it isn't, then, um, you know, it will be. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, absolutely, priority, m most certainly noted. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Sam, actually, I, I just wonder if you could explain something to me. And, and you said just at the end there that um, um, one of the figures would go, the contribution from the town would go down from 89% um, down to 79%, but I couldn't quite follow how that would, how that yeah, would work. Yeah, so it's from 81 to 79%. Oh, 81, right. Yeah, okay. the reason for the decrease is basically we're trying to boost our, our, the income which comes from non taxpayer funding so not from the precept which means aiming to increase revenue from facilities such as this um, and be more ambitious in the grants that we apply for to ensure that we get an income stream which is not just from from taxpayers so that is I think very important because we, we need to look there's only obviously so much that we want to ask from our local taxpayers we want to look for all uh, possible alternative funding means wherever wherever available. Sarah, thanks Sam. Sarah. Sorry, it was a point rather than um, a question, but one of the things that you did mention, which I think is quite important, is that having brought all the maintenance of our green spaces in-house, not only do we have a wonderful team of um, town wardens that do the job that was not being done very well by Wiltshire Council, but also in situations like last weekend when we had the floods, um, it was possible to have this wonderful and incredibly dedicated and knowledgeable group of people managing traffic, pumping water, um, clearing drains and everything else that n certainly ID Verdi would never have been here for us. So I think that's one of the best decisions. Well, one of the many good decisions, but certainly one of the things that, that you know, isn't, doesn't directly affect the budget, but it does mean that that amount of money, which is the same, is actually much, much more useful to us than it would have been had it been an external contract. And it was really noticeable this weekend. 
six o'clock in the morning they started. Completely agree, and uh, Friday was highly impressed with how they basically just took over <laughs> managing the almost impossible situation they were faced with and showed great resourcefulness, um, and we we're very fortunate to have such a committed team of individuals. Yeah. Thank you, and of course they help at all our events as well, so really a very varied role and the public face often of the, of the council, so... Um, uh, that's a very good point. Uh, so yes, as you say, we are seeking to try and um, and uh, get resources, uh, money from other resources, so that we're not just um, putting up the council tax w when people are, are struggling. But uh, I think the nine percent increase is is the best we can achieve, and um, and and is good value for money in terms of what we're offering as a town council now. Are there any other comments? Nope. Uh, so the recommendation is that we agree to set the budget for 24-25 at 1.431 million and the precept at £273.16 for a bandy pro um, property, a 9% increase. So is that your proposal, Sam? Would someone like to second? Uh, Tim, thank you very much. Those in favour and against? No, that was una unanimous. Uh, Lovely. So now um, item eight is the uh, vote to move into confidential session. So would somebody propose that, please? Thank you, Emma. Seconded. Sarah, thank you very much. And those in favour? Thank you. So I'm afraid we have to have the confidential part of the meeting now, but thank you very much for coming along on such a cold evening.